Blessings of community of spouses. Listen, Coach T coming in with you. I am super duper late today. Traffic was horrible coming home. It was horrible. And so um, my 30 minutes time with you has now been shortened. <laughs> hello, hello. And so I want to just go ahead and just jump right into what I want to share with you. I didn't even put up the topic yet because I want to see... Um, what the Holy Spirit would um, finalize and let me say what this topic is going to be about. But I'm going to just go ahead and start. So let me pray. Father God, we bless you. We love you. We thank you, Jesus, for your amazing grace and mercy. Thank you, Father, for being a good, good Father. Thank you, God, for your uh, faithfulness in our life, God, as you continue to guide and direct and protect your people, God. I pray now, asking your son, Jesus' name, God, that you would touch the homes, the marriages, and families, God. I pray, Lord, for your spirit, God, to rush through in and out homes, God, for your presence to rest upon homes and marriages, God, and families. I pray, Lord, for the, for the fire of God to burn up any evil tactic, scheme, agenda that the enemy has set, planned for your people, God, concerning their marriages, concerning their families, God. Lord, I pray that you destroy it now in the mighty name of Jesus, God, as we continue to place our trust in you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. As I pray and ask you saints, Lord God, in your son Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. All right. So look, let me go ahead and just jump right into this um, message on today and i want to start off by sharing like a little like you know giving you like a little story or kind of like telling the story so look imagine riding on a helicopter okay imagine riding on a helicopter with plans to meet your entire family on this island okay you and your family y'all got plans okay we're gonna all meet up on this island i see you when you get there mwah, mwah, later whatever okay just to get there and find that you are there by yourself, right? Just to get there and find out, you know, find out that you're there by yourself. And it's not that you're there by your, yourself, but instead, each one of your family members have been dropped off in different areas and different parts of the island. And the idea is for you to find your way back to each other, okay? So y'all had these plans that, okay, this is how life is going to go. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to all meet up and come back this way. But instead, when you get there, you get to this place and find out that, okay, well, where everybody at? Like, you know, what happened or whatever. And I kind of had a similar story, something like this, and a, a dream that I want to share with you maybe at the end of this video, all right? And that's what I want to discuss with you today. How, family, how, family, can you rediscover your marriage and family through the lens of God? Rediscovering, rediscovering your marriage and your family through the lens of God, all right? So about 3.13 exactly this morning, God woke me up and I heard myself. Sometimes when I wake up or whatever in the middle of the night, and I hadn't did this in a long time, so this is why I know um, God is on this. I had not done this. I usually, back in the day when I was in a lot of warfare um, and praying for my husband, I would get up and be mumbling like different Bible verses. And so I woke up with this Bible verse on the top of my tongue. And I was saying these words found in Philippians 3.13, which is so crazy, right? Forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting those things which are behind, okay? And so Philippians 3.13 says, Brother, brethren, I counted not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. That is what I woke up with. And I've been having this feeling, I've been having this really, really strong feeling that God is walking a lot of marriages backwards to forward. He's been walking a lot, he's walking a lot of marriages backwards to forward. All right. I feel like in this next season, in this next season of your life, in your marriage, it's not about your next chapter. You know, a lot of times it's like, okay, what's next? You know, you know, you go into your next chapter, you go into your next thing or whatever. No, this is not about your next chapter. This is about your new chapter. I feel like God is saying it is about, this is about getting not just a do over this time, but it's about starting a brand new this time. God is getting ready not to just give you a do over. God is giving you something brand new in this season, okay? But the only thing about it is you have to, in order to receive this, you have to be willing to do it his way, okay? You are going to have to be able to do it his way and allow him in to do it with you this time, okay? Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. It can be scary. Anything new can be scary, all right? And so... um. 
just, you know, start a new job, move into a new area, you know, um, start a new family. It can, it can be scary. It can be scary. But I feel like God is saying, this is something I'm ready to do for you. It's time for that shift to take place. You've been in this, you've been tearing on this, on this lane long enough. I need to do a shift. I need to do a shift. And so I will call this journey trust, right? I will call this journey trust. And it does take a whole lot of faith to trust God in this way, all right? Anytime you start something new, you're not aware what, about what's getting ready to take place. And that can be scary. Um, but God is saying, I want to show you something different this time, okay? I want to show you something different this time. So, I want to give you these quick little um, points. Because like I said, that's, our time had to be shortened because of the traffic. And I have a session at 7. So, I do apologize. Um, but I want to still be able to share... Um, with you these points how do you rediscover your marriage and your family with god how do you rediscover your your marriage and your family with the lenses of god with god allowing with god directing you and helping you okay and i have four points and i want to share those with you point number one first you need to surrender first you need to surrender you allow god to be god in your situation and trust him to guide you on your path um the Bible verse in Psalms 23 and 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear, fear no evil. For thou art with me, thou rod, and thy staff comfort me. Listen, anytime <laughs> God is asking you to surrender yourself over to him and trust him, it can be scary. <laughs> it literally feels like you are walking down a valley, a shadow of death. Okay. It can literally feel like, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to do this. You can literally come into a place where you feel like I'm not going to be able to do this. Right. I'm not going to be able to do that. But God has said in this season, on this new path that I'm getting ready to take you down, you're going to have to surrender. You're going to have to surrender. You're going to have to take my hand through this process, even though you may not be able to see me, but you have to know that I am here with you and I want to walk you through this path. I want to walk you through this valley. All right. God is saying you're going to have to surrender in this season. All right. Point two, you are going to have to accept what is and focus on what God said is coming, okay? Focus on what is, accept, you have to accept and focus on what is and focus more on what God said is coming. Basically, you have to accept your reality, okay? You have to accept where things are right now. And a lot of people, I've, I've, I've come into a lot of contact with couples, I've come in a lot of contact with my wives. Um, a lot of people are struggling in this area. Heck, sometimes it's even hard for Coach T, right? Um, just coming to a place of accepting, like, this is my reality. <laughs> this is where I'm at right now, but this is only a temporary season. This is where I'm at right now, but God told me that I'm going there, all right? And so because God told me that I'm going there, I'm not going to focus on what I'm, where I'm at right now. Even though I'm accepting it, I'm going to focus on going there, okay? It's almost like a person, this is probably like a bad, bad illustration. Ugh. It's almost like a person who said, okay, I have to go and serve 30, 60, 90 days in jail. All right. <laughs> I got to go serve this time. Like, I don't want to do that, but I have to, you know, it is what it is. I got to do that. And I know after those 90 days, I'll be able to get out. I'll be able to move on. I'll be able to, you know, start my life over, whatever, whatever. Okay. This is like, sometimes God does, sometimes God does give us a timeline. Sometimes God does not. So you have to come to a place and accept where you are. What it is, what it, you know, what your what your situation is right now, accept that and knowing that God has made you a promise and God said you're going to come out of this thing, all right? Philippians chapter 4, 11, 13 says, I am not saying this because I am, I, I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances, okay? I know what it is to be, I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or um, hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I, excuse me, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. This is the hour to develop your strength, okay? This is the hour God is saying, I am building you up in me. I am strengthening you in me. This is the hour God is saying, it's not going to be you this time. It's not going to be by your might. It's not going to be by your will. It's going to be me that's going to help you in this hour, okay? I think uh, about I was talking about that in Corinthians, um, 
listen to this first second Corinthians we'll talk about you know um when you are weak that's when God is strong my grace is sufficient you know my grace is sufficient enough for you God is saying right now my strength is going to be sufficient enough for you this is where I want you to release I want you to let go I want you to stop trying to do it your way I want you to accept what it is focus on what I'm going to get you at and rely solely on my strength okay rely solely on my strength all right point number three you never leave the position of being a student, okay? You never leave the position of being a student. God is saying so many people feel like they have arrived. <laughs> oh, I'm old enough. Oh, I remember back in the day when I was young, I used to do this, I used to do that. But now, and it's like God is saying you're going to always be a student. You're going to always be a student. That's always something for you to learn. doesn't matter how long you've been married. doesn't matter how long you've been um in that relationship with your, you know, with your spouse, God said there is still always something to learn. And I'm always teaching you something. I'm always teaching you something, whether for your marriage or whether for something in, in your life, okay? God is always doing something in us. He's always teaching us. He always wants us to um, um, learn and grow in him, all right? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So that the servant of God may be thoroughly, thoroughly equipped for every good work. God is always, always, always looking for us, his children, looking for his uh, spouses, looking for us to grow in him, looking for us to learn in him. And so when we get to a place, when we be thinking that we know it all and we, you know, we done jumped ahead of him, God was like, okay, then bring you on back to class and bring you on back to class. So it's always a good position to be in, just remain a student, okay? Remain a student. Allow God to examine you right where you are, okay? Allow him to examine you right where you are. Let him do all the critiquing that need to be did, okay? Allow God to put you back in the student's chair of life. Go into his presence. And I heard a pastor say this once before. Go into his presence knowing nothing and let him completely empty you out, okay? So he can fill you back up with what he needs to fill you back up again. So many spouses are missing out on this opportunity because they are not. They are so holy than thou. They are so overly righteous. Or they're so, you know, I know God's word or I know what God's word say. And they're not allowing God to show them something different. God said, I want to give you a different, a, a different version of me in this season. I want to show you something different. But you have to let go of what, what was and focus on what I'm trying to take you, okay? You got to let go of that part. And so go to God and sit in his presence completely and ask God to just empty out everything in you and, and, and help you to start anew. Help you to start anew, okay? And then the fourth thing, you feed your spirit man and you starve the soulish man, okay? You feed the spirit man and you starve the soulish man. Why do you do this? Why do you need to um, spiritually feed yourself? Why do you need to spiritually feed yourself on this in this new season, Okay? And the reason being is you need to feed yourself on this in this new season so you won't lose your faith and your belief in Christ on your journey. Listen, when you have been walking through something for a very long time and a very uh, and you've been walking through something hard, and it seems like God is not working. <laughs> even though we know, even though even though the sun say he's working, even though you know we 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 read things that he's working, but it seems like God, what's going on? <laughs> What's, what's going on? And I can sit here and, and, and say, you know, wholeheartedly, I'm one of those people, I'd like to talk out to God. Like, God, like, what, what where you at? Because huh? I, I need to feel you. My auntie used to teach me and saying and pray, um, a prayer saying, you know, God, help me to feel your presence a little bit more. Help me to feel your presence a little bit more. Um, and so I would encourage spouses to do that when you feel like, you know, God, where are you? <laughs> where are you? I need to feel your presence a little bit more. I need to know that you are here with me. I need to know that I can feel you just a little bit so I can feel that I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm close to you. I'm connected to you. You know what I'm going through. You see what I've been going through for all this time, God. And I know it's a reasoning behind this. I know it's a, it's a reason that you, you, you've allowed this. And so I'm praying, God, for you to help me to feel your presence a little bit more, okay? John chapter 6, verses 55 to 59 says, For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. <clears throat> this is Jesus speaking. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I, be, and I live because of the Father. So whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that comes down from heaven like, like, this is the bread that comes down from heaven not like the bread the fathers 
ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Listen, Jesus is telling us, spouses, he is telling us, you're going to need me. <laughs> you're going to need me on this new journey, okay? You're going you're gonna to need me. You're going to have to feed on me. You're going to have to lean on me. You're going to have to trust in me. You're going to have to abide in me. You're going to have to study with me. You're going to have to come and sit with me. You're going to have to come and talk to me. You're going to need me on this journey. The only way for you to deny the soul man of yourself, which is your real, your mind, your emotions, and in order for you to deny that person, you're going to have to cleave to your spirit man you're going to have to allow the holy spirit to uh uh sit with you and, and the holy spirit needs a, a a clean spot to come and sit with you know a lot of times I, I hear you know uh couples you know all the time you know having different disagreements um having you know real fights you know this is, is him is him the blame game type of thing going on let me teach you something about the blame game <laughs> let me teach you let me teach you a little a little trick about the blame game okay um the blame game is simply that, a game, <laughs> okay? It's a game. And the only way you win is by staying stuck in that place. That's the only way the game, the game, the game of blame works, okay? But someone, someone has to make a decision to quit the game. Otherwise, the blame game continues to go on, okay? So many spouses are pointing their fingers and pointing their fingers and pointing their fingers and pointing their fingers. You have to ask God to help you to release that. <laughs> you have to ask God to help you to not focus on your spouse, but to focus on what you need to focus on and focus on what it is that you need to do. And you have to pray and trust God to help your spouse. You have to pray and trust God to help your spouse. Listen, let's just go back to this island. When I on this island, God and about all y'all here together. He didn't bring y'all to this spot for no reason. When God came and got y'all, he said, hey, I'm putting y'all all on helicopter. Y'all going on, y'all going to be on different helicopters, but y'all going to all come to, on this island together. He didn't tell y'all what was going to happen when he brought y'all to this island. He didn't tell y'all what was going to take place once he brought you to this island. But God said, I need y'all to find your way back to each other. I need y'all to find y'all way back to each other. I need y'all to reconnect and find your way back together because y'all all here, y'all a family, y'all whole, I place you here. The Bible tells us in Matthew 19 and 6, what God has joined together, let not man separate. Listen, I just did a, a, a marriage, a beautiful, um, I'm sorry, a wedding. I just did a beautiful wedding recently. And uh, one of the things I was most on, uh, honored in doing was the family sand ceremony. And it wasn't just the husband and wife that did the ceremony, um, did the sand, but it was the husband, the wife, and the children, and the children. And God was saying, this is, this, this is the order of the family. This is the order of the family. And God said, I, I sent y'all there on separate helicopters, but y'all all have gotten certain instructions and y'all need to find your way back to, to each other. Y'all need to find your way back to each other. If I wanted y'all apart, if I wanted you separated, then I would have never sent you back there together. But I have you there together for a reason. And I know it seems frustrating. I know you're kicking and hollering and screaming. I know you're trying to figure out what's going on. Like, why is it happening like this? Why, why is it happening like this, God? But God said, I need you to find your way back to each other. And the only way, the only way you're going to be able to find your way back to your loved one, to your family member, to your husband, to your wife, to your children, the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you abide in him. The only way you're going to be able to do that is if you allow him. The only way you're going to be able to do that is if you trust God on this journey. It is a journey. And God is saying, I want to give you something new. I want to show you a new version. I want you to see your marriage and your family through a different lens. I want you to see your marriage and your family the way I see your marriage and your family. Okay? And this is what God is speaking to his people in this hour. He's saying we are having to be as bold as lions in this hour. Come on, spouses. We have to be as bold as lions in this hour. The enemy is after God's people faith, period. <laughs> He's after God's people faith, especially the ones, especially the ones who have been going on this journey. It's been a longevity for them. It's been a longevity ride for them, okay? But I am here today to tell you, God is calling you on a new path. Maybe foreign, maybe scary. You may be unsure. You may not really want to do it. But God is saying, I want you to come. I want you to come here. I want you to come this way with me. I'm going to be right here with you. I want you to find yourself back to your family. I put y'all together for a specific reason. And because I put y'all together for a specific reason, you're going to find your way back to each other. I know it may not look like it right now. I know things may not look it's like the way you want it to look right now, but God said you're going to find your way back to each other. Um, a quick transparency on my end. Like I said, um, God had gave me a dream. Um, and I remember this dream like it was like, oh my God. It was so, it was not a terrifying dream, but it was a dream that I just not, I did not want to, I didn't want to do it. <laughs> I just didn't want to do it. Um, me and my husband 
had you know we was in a, we was in a good place or whatever and um like in real life I don't like bridges <laughs> like in real life <laughs> I don't like bridges and so it's this bridge it's actually this bridge um in my in my state of Florida uh, when I go to see my brothers that um, when we go down there I don't like crossing this bridge. And so in the dream, me and my husband was in the car and I was in the car. And, you know, usually when in your dream, if you see yourself driving, that shows the person, you know, um, you want to have control type of thing or whatever. In the dream I was driving, my husband was in a passenger seat and he was super duper quiet. He was super duper quiet. It was really dark outside. It was like a lot of cars. It was like a lot of people. Like each person was like getting ready to go up this bridge. And as we got closer to this bridge, I kept saying, I don't want, you know, I don't want to do this. I just feel like this bridge is not going to be good for us. We're going to get up here. We're going to mess around and fall. I don't want to do this. I don't want to cross this bridge. But we could not get out of the line. Like we could not go, you know, back. And so the more my kept telling my husband, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. The Lord, um, he, 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 my husband was just sitting there just quiet. He was just like looking straight. He wasn't saying nothing. But me, I kept on saying, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. <laughs> I don't want to do this. And so sure enough, we got to that bridge. We got to that bridge. And just what I said, the bridge collapsed. The bridge collapsed. And we fell down in the water. But as we were falling down in the water, all I kept on saying to myself is, Lord, how long are we going to be here? Lord, how long are we going to be here, right? And I remember waking up from that dream just being like, oh, my God, like, what does that mean? And just to backtrack a little bit, like I think I told you guys on last week when I came here, like the Lord put me on this new assignment. I kept on saying, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Because I, not only am I, I, I teach and preach to couples, but I also, it, I also, it also resonates with me as well. You know, it also it has some relatable parts to me as well. And um, I just felt like that dream was so what we are right now. <laughs> it was like exactly where we are. It's like, I don't want to do this. And you like, the, the feeling wasn't like, okay, it, you know, we failed. We know we died or we got, you know, it was like we was falling. <laughs> we was falling in the water. We didn't actually hit the water. We was falling in the water. And all I kept on saying is, how long are we going to be here? Like, how long are we going to be here? And I never did get that answer. Spouses, I know you may be asking God, Lord, how long are we going to be in this place? How long are we going to be on this island, separated from each other? How long are we going to be on this in this place with everybody in their own little world? How long are we going to be, you know, be in this area with everybody doing their own thing or whatever? We can't find our ways. How long are we going to be here, God? How long are we going to be here? And I really, really, really believe God is saying that depends on you. You have to. Let's go back to these points, okay? That depends on you. If you surrender to God, <laughs> if you accept what is, okay, and focus on what's coming, if you remain a student, okay, remain a student, don't leave your position as being a student, and feed your spirit man and starve your soul man, that will depend on how long you would be there, okay? God is giving us options in this season, spouses. He's giving us options in this season. And one of the things he's saying more than anything, I want to give you me. I want to give you all of me. I want you to receive the blessings. I want you to receive everything that, that, that you desire. I want you to be able to receive those things, but you got to do it my way. You got to do it my way. And that's, and that's what a lot of spouses get it. That's, that's what we like. That's what it's like. Uh, is it another option, God? <laughs> Is there another way I can go around and not have to do it your way? Uh, is it is there another way I can, I can get what I want out of this and not have to do it your way? And God said, that's that's the only way through this door. That's the only way through this door. On this on this new side, it's not your next side. This is your new side. On this new side, you're going to have to do it my way in order for this to work and be successful for you. Listen, spouses, I want to encourage you to stay together. I want to encourage you to work it out. I want to encourage you to go to God in prayer concerning your marriage. I want to go, I want to encourage you to ask God to help you, to help you in your marriage, all right? To help you on your journey, to help you with what he's doing, to help you with the changes, help you with the transition, to help you with the, the different things that's taking place right now. Go to God in prayer and ask him, listen, sometimes you don't even know what to pray for. Sometimes you don't even know what to say. And so one of the things I have been telling my couples, use the word help. <laughs> God help me. God help us. God help, 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 help. Let help be your new prayer in this season. If you don't know what to say to God, if you don't know how to go about this thing, allow God to be your help in this season, okay? And let God show you something new. 
Listen, Coach T wants to encourage you to sign up for your marital booth. Check in on your marriage. Check in on your marriage. I am often a package. Tis the season to say marriage. Tis the season to say marriage. Where I give couples a whole package full of goodies for your marital um, relationship. I give you some resources. I give you some um, t-shirts. I give you some face masks. I give you some t-shirts, um, face masks. I give you some books. I give you some um, some some um, mugs. You have this whole package put together just for you, and you get a 90-minute session. You get a 90-minute session so we can check on your marriage and see where you are so we can get you back to that healthy place. God is saying, I want to give you that new thing in your marriage, but you got to do it my way, all right? You got to do it my way. So I want to encourage you to sign up for your session. Sign up for your session. Sign up for your 30 minutes free session first. We, we do a 30-minute session just to kind of see where you are. And from there, we move from your 30-minute session to your 90-minute session, and that is part of your package. And it comes with those things, a his and her t-shirt, a his and her face mask, a his and her wristband, a his and her um, husband and wife book, a his and her um, mug, and um, some resources, some resources to get you started, to get you prepared, to help you on your journey of marriage, all right? Marriage is hard. Marriage is hard. But when we let God in and allow him to help us on this journey, he will show us the way. Hello, hello, hello. Sign up today at www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com. That's www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com. I want to get that package to you. That package is running down for $175. It's normally a $300 package. It's normally a $300 package. But for this specific time frame, for this time frame, I want to give it to my to my spouses for $175. Tis the season to stay married. Tis the season to stay married. Sign up today www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com. All right? Listen, spouses, I will see you on next Thursday. Have an awesome week. Blessings.